the Nautilus quickly gained in popularity and became one of the most talked about watches in existence. Since the discontinuing of the 5711, its market value tripled, resulting in a weird situation where one could earn a yearly wage by selling their boring Patek. But forget about prices for a second and ignore that one reference everybody's always talking about. Make way for a far more interesting porthole inspired Patek. Today, we're going to enjoy one with a date function, a power reserve, a moon phase, and a decentral second. Welcome to the watch guide of the 3712 and 5712, and we will also explore the differences between these two seemingly similar models. I've been a watch enthusiast close to a decade now, and my preference remains to more classic and refined timepieces. But I do enjoy a fair share of sporty and tool watches, but it took me some time to appreciate the design and technical marvel that is the Nautilus. But once it had me, I was hooked. Well, to most examples that is, the ones without the integrated bracelet, but on leather or rubber instead, never sparked anything in me nor was the 5712 worthy of my attention since I regarded the dial as too hectic. But then that day came, I purchased one, and I finally started properly looking at it and examined this very special watch that hasn't been properly covered at all. All these videos and blog posts about that 5711 everybody has, but nobody cared to share their knowledge about this more complicated reference? Maybe I am the chosen one to present you not only the history and specs, but my opinion shifted 180 degrees and perhaps I can ignite your passion for this model as well. For this video, I am wearing another Nautilus, which is the Reference 3710, and soon it will become clear why I chose this ref. Starting with its history. I will not bore you with the whole story about how Gerald Genta in the 70s supposedly drew the design of the Nautilus on a napkin and what incredible influence it has had in the watch world. Instead, I like to fast forward into the current millennium. Patek Philippe approached the 30 year anniversary of the Nautilus and more was expected than just a different dial color or an alternate case size. They had not experimented a lot with the plain Nautilus except for previous mentioned adjustments and material options. There was one exception though, the 3710 that launched in 1998 and featured a power reserve, being the first Nautilus to display a different complication than merely a date function. Most attention of the Nautilus anniversary lineup in 2006 went to the chronograph and the Ref 5980, whilst the freshly introduced 5712 was somewhat overlooked. Maybe because one year prior, out of thin air, Patek launched the 3712. The same complications, similar look. But in fact, there are many differences instead. And I'm happy to walk you through these if we look at them side by side. By many, it has been regarded as an ugly duckling due to its unconventional dial design. But if you're willing to look closer, you might discover you actually secretly prefer this over the classic 5711 or 3700 for that matter. First off is the case. Slightly larger than the 5711 in order to house and display the complications. The 3712 and 5712 are only differing one millimeter in case size and last mentioned it's a tiny bit thicker. But more noticeable is that they do not share the same case construction at all. The 3712 is made with a monoblock case, so out of two pieces, just like the first 3700, but with a crystal case back. The 5712 uses a much more cost-efficient construction that we will see in all Nautiluses from then on. The difference is not really visible without taking it apart, but look at the case back, where unlike the 3712, the 5712 has a facet. From the front side, there's also a difference in design. It's easily and often overlooked, but the hinges or ears used to be straight, but from 2006 onwards, they were curved instead. Over to the crown. They clearly have a different profile and the one from the 3712 is smaller, but what blew my mind is that only the 5712 has a screw down mechanism. So unlike popular belief, this doesn't necessarily affect the waterproofness. 
Regarding the bracelet, I'm inclined to say they're the same, yet the profile of the center link is a tad rounder on the 3712. It's hard to show, but it reflects the light kind of different. The clasp is identical and uses a flip lock and butterfly clasp. For the movement, both references count on the 240 PS IRM CLU. So the base caliber is the 240 that features 29 jewels, a straight line lever escapement, shock absorber mechanism, a self-compensating flat balance spring, and a monometallic balance. Adjusted to cold, heat, isochronism, and five positions. But to fully understand the letters, we need to already look at the dial. The PS stands for Petite Secondes, that is located at the right bottom of the dial. IRM is Indication Reserve de Marche, at the exact opposite side of the dial. CLU means calendrier et lune that we can find in the subdial at the seven o'clock position. The movement is powered by a micro rotor in 22 karat yellow gold and hasn't gone through many changes over the years. Prior to 2009, it was hallmarked with the Geneva seal and afterwards we can find the PP seal. So the most interesting feature is without a shadow of a doubt, the dial. The classic gradient blue face with horizontal growths is full of small differences between these two references. Let's start top left with the power reserve. Although the 3712 was only in production for a year, it is divided in two series. The first one has the three red dots at the start and the later one, just like the 5712, has four. So far, it's common knowledge, but it's interesting to notice and never has been published that the 5712 also comes in two series. From the first example in 2006 until 2008, it has one dot at the end of the power reserve, just like the 3712 but during its entire production run. And from 2008 onwards, it features an extra dot next to the 48. The biggest difference can be found in the subdial underneath the reserve the marsh. On the 3712, it is smaller and therefore giving room for a marker at the seven o'clock position. Also, the baton at the six isn't rounded off like it is at the 5712. To increase legibility, they used a bigger font for the date numerals on the 5712 and inverted the numbers from nine to 23, along with the thicker hour and minute hands. But here it is, why the 3712 is a better watch than the 5712. Not because the 3712 is way rarer and more historically important, or because the 5712 uses a cheaper case construction, but the finishing of the moon face. Way more depth can be found in the 3712, whereas the stars are framed with thick lacquer, unlike just a printed disc that we can find on the ladder. For me, it's interesting to notice how your opinion can shift if you learn more about it. It might be the same as classic music. It's probably hard for a kid to understand Chopin, and therefore he or she will be less likely to enjoy it. But as you gain more experience and knowledge, you get to learn your true opinion about a subject. In this case, the Nautilus. For me, it was exciting to hold them next to each other and discover the minor differences. I hope you enjoyed my exploration too and happy to hear your thoughts on both. And maybe I missed something, drop it in the comment section. Furthermore, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the KOV channel and give us some inspiration for our next watch guide. And I'll see you then.